Hello and welcome to the channel Love Obstetrics and Gynecology. This video is regarding the instruments that are required for the cesarean section. So first the instruments for the cesarean section are sponge holding forceps, towel clips, bowel, plane and tooth tissue holding forceps, blade with a scalpel, Ellis tissue holding forceps, scissors, artery forceps, Doyne's abdominal wall retractor, cord clamps, green armitage forceps, needle holder and some suturing material. This video is going to explain you the stepwise requirement of these instruments. The patient is on the OT table and you require bowel with some sponges that are beaten in soaked and a sponge holding forceps. For to clean the patient, now you can see on its working end it has a ring and that ring has inner transverse serrations and a lock so that the sponge gets a good grasp. The uses of the Sponge holding forceps in obstetric are to hold the lips of a pregnant cervix, cervical tear repair. In the cesarean section also you can hold the edges of the uterus applying the pressure by means of a sponge or a deep point, bleeding point or to evacuate the products of conception. Though we rarely use it, we use most commonly the ovum forceps and in gynae you can say to clamp the infundibulo pelvic ligament. Coming back to the cesarean section, next we are going to drape the patient and to hold those drapes we are going to require the towel clip. So require 3 or 4 towel clips just to hold the drapes in position. Next you are going to require is a tooth tissue holding forceps. Now tooth tissue holding forceps basically for grasping the skin and checking the effect of anesthesia. It has a tooth at its business end or working end you can see 2 into 1 tooth is there and it works with a spring action right you check for the effect of anesthesia next are you ready to give the incision you require a scalpel with a blade and blade that we most commonly use is 23 number blade right you first incise the skin and then you have fat then you have your rectus sheath when you come to the rectus sheath, you are going to require Ellis tissue holding forceps. This is a Ellis tissue holding forceps. It has multiple rat teeth over its working end. See this is the working end and you can see there are multiple teeth. Basically it is used for holding tough tissue structures. You can say the rectus sheath or there are various other uses such as in obstetric you can hold in cesarean section itself peritoneum, the uterine edges or the apex of the episiotomy, inversion of uterus and various gynecological procedures where Ellis tissue holding forceps is used. Next to incise the sheath after holding it with Ellis you require a pair of scissors right a pair of scissor, medicine bomb, Myers scissor are two types and you have to always keep the point of the curved scissor Kefil head. Next after opening all the layers of abdomen right skin, fat, rectus sheath, peritoneum has been opened. Now you are going to insert the Doyne's abdominal wall retractor. So this is a Doyne's abdominal wall retractor to hold the lower edge of the incision right to retract the lower edge of the incision so that you can see the lower uterine segment well. So now this my Doyne's abdominal wall retractor after opening the parietal peritoneum is in place and it is retracting the lower edge. Next I am going to require is a plain tissue holding forceps so as to move the visceral peritoneum over the lower uterine segment and from where it is freely attached over the uterus and passing over to the bladder that is where you need to incise it horizontally so that you can make a incision and push the bladder down. After pushing the bladder down, you are going to advance your Doyne's retractor so that now visceral peritoneum is also under it. Now you will be able to see the lower uterine segment clearly that is the bladder is away from the your uterine incision. You will now require a scalpel with a blade and you will give multiple nicks, multiple small nicks superficial nicks over the lower uterine segment and when the myometrium has been thinned out you are going to require a artery forceps to make a blunt opening right like this and then open the artery forceps. Now to extend the incision you can do it 
by a blunt method or a sharp method for sharp method you will require a scissors this is a pair of scissors and this is how you are going to make a incision over your uterus so now the uterus has been incised next is extraction of the baby you are going to put a hand inside right right inside the uterus and you are going to grasp the part that is occupying the lower pole of the uterus and when you had a nice grasp you are going to take out your twins retractor and then finally take out the baby now baby is out he is attached to placenta with the cord so now you are going to require two cord clamps these are the cord clamps right it has a lock and it is just like a big artery forceps it has transverse serrations over its working end right see there are transverse serrations these are basically to have a good grasp on the cord and you are going to require two of these one for the maternal side and other for the baby side and when you have clamped both the sides you are going to cut in between and you will require a pair of scissors for that so now the cord has been clamped the next step is you are going to put back your doins retractor right doins retractor is now reinserted and next is you are going to take out your placenta and membranes after taking out placenta and membranes you will require a green armitage hemostatic forceps and you will require four of them one for the upper edge one for the lower and two for the angles right this is a green armitage forceps see it has a lock and at its working end you can see it is triangular in shape and flat and it has horizontal or transverse serrations inside it it is basically atraumatic and achieves very good hemostasis over the bleeding uterine edges this big and the atraumatic end helps in achieving a good hemostasis over the bleeding uterine edges next you require is a needle holder for suturing the edges of the uterus this is a needle holder it has a lock it is a box joint and over its working end it has criss cross type pattern serrations along with a groove inside it for having a better hold on the needle and you are going to stitch first the uterus and for that uterus stitching you will require a chromic catgut number 1 suture and you are going to stitch it in two layers so this is my chromic catgut number 1 suture and always stitch your uterus in two layers right the needle that this suture uses is both curved and a round body needle right the next you have achieved a complete hemostasis over the uterus you are going to suture your peritoneum for holding the peritoneum you will require either a artery forceps or you can use ellis tissue holding forceps and after holding the edges of the peritoneum you are going to suture the peritoneum using chromic catgut number 10 or chromic catgut number 0 suture continuous running suturing is done to close the peritoneum after closing peritoneum you are going to hold the edges of the rectus sheath with ellis tissue holding forceps and you require four of these again for the two angles and upper and lower edge and the thread that is going to be used is vicryl number 1 again it is going to be sutured in a continuous fashion starting from one end to the other next up we have is skin for skin you require silk number 1 on a cutting needle and the skin is sutured in a interrupted vertical mattress sutures right and you will require a tooth forceps for it now all your layers have been sutured and complete hemostasis have been achieved quick revision this is sponge holding forceps towel clip tooth tissue holding forceps scalpel scissors ellis tissue holding forceps doins abdominal wall retractor then we have is a cord clamp the two pair of these just big artery forceps this is green armitage forceps artery forceps the needle holder and finally plain tissue holding forceps and coming on to the sutures we have first for the uterus it is chromic catgut number 1 for the peritoneum 
chromic catgut number 10 for the sheath vicle number 1 and for the skin silk number 1 so thanks for watching my video please do like subscribe and share my channel love obstetrics and gynecology